Good morning, Vietnam! Go uh, 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 uh. call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my peers, putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom explosions. Overpowering, over the competition, I'm tearing, wrecking shop. When I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops, you better move, don't dare ever compare, cause you all get scared. Me to the rest that'll all get sliced and diced. Competition paying that price. Ah. Don't call it a comeback. What's up, Dodge? What's up, Diobinuli? Craig? Dissing Dillion, you dissing, you dissing my, my, my countryman, my Jamaican countryman, four time drunk teacher, call him Craig. Craig. Yes. Ah, Anthony, just been watching Putin being interviewed by Tucker Carlson, and now you. <laughs> Jam down, what's good? Yes, 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 indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do this hangout. Manners and respect, like you say, brethren. You know what I mean? Take you a long way in this world. It don't cost much. It don't cost much. Manners, respect. Yeah, I like that. Manners and respect. Yeah, 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 yeah. True that. Respect is very important. Respect is very important. Very, very important. All right, we got Ke Ke I don't know how to pronounce it. It's all good. If White plays it right, he'll finally get the Wilder fight six years late. Toby Bartlett. What's good, Toby? Wizard Sleeves. After that pathetic effort versus Fury, who cares? <laughs> not, not putting on punches, eh, Wizards? <laughs> Darren Christie, hit the like as you come in, people. You heard the man. Hit the like as you come in. You know, that's, that's a good way to start your experience on this hangout. Hit the like. You know? Smash the like. Tell them Dion Benuli. Smash the like. You know what I mean? Smash the like button, man. Big up, Hakeem. Smash the like, people. You know what I mean? Top up the like button. Yeah. Top it up. Don't, don't, don't even hit the like. Smash the fucking... You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, so Dillian, Dillian is on the comeback, bro. Dillian White is on the comeback. Wow. 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 Got some good, some good stuff to cover here today. You know, you know what I mean. Got some good stuff to cover here. Dylan, Dylan is like Marmite. That's what I'm realizing. Dylan is Marmite, bro. You either like it or you not like it. To me, I give Dylan. A whole lot of credit. 
I give Dillian a lot of credit. Not just for his prowess in the ring. I give Dillian a lot of credit, bro. You know what I mean? Dillian is one of the more important figures in the current heavyweight division. I know people don't like hearing that because, you know what I mean, so if, if you if there's certain things you find you don't like about him, I, I understand it. And once I think you hate Dillian, the hate is going to stay. You know what I mean? And I get it. I get it. But Dillian, you know, let me just put his box rec up, man, so I can get a detailed analysis of what I want to talk about him. You know what I mean? Let me tell you where, where all right, I'll tell you where I'm going to start it from. You know what I mean? I'll tell you where I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it from, um, where should we start? What fight should we start? What was the important fight? Let's see. I'm on the box right now, people. Give me two seconds. Two seconds and I'll have it done in a jiffy. So, September, 12th of September, 2015, Dillian fought an American named Brian Minto on the undercard of AJ versus Gary Cornish. You know? Twenty fifteen. Anthony Joshua. We all know AJ. He was thirteen and all. Dillian was fifteen and all. Now, the setup was Dillian, you beat Minto, AJ, you had a Cornish. And we're going to take it to the O2 arena again. You know what I mean? That was the deal. That was the deal. Yeah? That was the deal. So, the press conference. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? The, the, you got the protagonist there. You got Cornish, AJ, Minto, and Dillian. So, the mic comes around to Gary Cornish <laughs> to talk up, you know, to talk up, you know, like his his, his chances in the fight. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's hear Gary Cornish, the Scottish man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Gary, Gary, Gary's about to start brumbling off. And Dillian turned around to him and said, you're shit. I said, Dillian, you're not even fighting the guy. Dillian told him, you're shit. <laughs> And he lit up the press conference. He literally he lit it up, and from there, obviously he beat Minto. AJ AJ knocked out Cornish in one. And the energy between him and AJ, you know, like the energy Dillian had didn't drop until they got in the ring, and AJ finally took him out. Dillian kept that energy up all the way through the build-up of the fight, right into the fight. And the fight was a great fight. Yeah? Dillian is pivotal in helping Anthony Joshua build the brand and match from boxing. He's pivotal. He sold it. Sold it very well. Sold it very well. And then he went on to become a pay-per-view draw himself. Free agent. Free agent. Come off road. No amateur experience. How much? Four or five amateur fights? He beat AJ in the amateurs. And if you guys can remember that occasion when they fought for that British title... Yo, it was good, bro. It was a, listen, listen, 
that was a good night's domestic boxing. Very, I'm telling you, excellent, excellent. That ignited, that fight ignited the heavyweight division. Not Fury Klitschko, not Wilder Stavern. Respect due to them gentlemen. They've done very well for themselves. They've earned well. They've made their mark. Fury and Wilder had that trilogy. And that's going to, you know, register very well in history for them. It, it will. It will. But that night, Dillian versus AJ reignited the interest in the heavyweight division. And Dillian done his thing. Dillian done his thing. And I think that's why a AJ, because remember, you know, like, AJ more or less controls who can go on the card. Yeah? And AJ had Dillian on, on the card a few more times after that because he knew yeah, Dillian is a good salesman. And he can fight. Dillian ain't one of them guys you have to worry about. Oh, can he um, can he hold his own in a press conference and maybe get some more eyes on it? No, D Dillian's got that locked down. Got that locked down. Yeah. Got to give him his due. Got to give him his due. The can man. You know what I mean? Got to give him his due. All day. Done his thing. Who's he going to... That's a good question, um, Toby. Dio Biluni says, Dillian is done at elite level. Too slow. His punch resistance has left the building. You could be right. You could be right. You could be... I mean, he's 35 now. Anthony says, well, I do remember saying you that there aren't many opportunities for black males like Dillian in England, period, especially London. So I agree with you there. Did I say that? Oh, maybe I did. Maybe. <laughs> now, there's opportunities for us. Here. Or maybe I did say it. I don't know what context I said it in, though. But that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, for some, for, look, for some people, not, not even just black, you know, like, the boxing ring and or rap or music, that's their only way out. They're, they're never going to make it on the nine to five thing. Some people are just not cut out for it. You know what I mean? Some people ain't cut out for the nine to five thing. Anthony says, from where he came from to the level of competition he's fought, he's due his respect. Darren Christie, Triple D versus White is a good fight. I'd like to see Joe Joyce and Dillian. You know what I mean? I'd like to see Joe Joyce and Dillian. Let's see Joyce get past Cash Alley. And then we get it in. JT. Big up TT. Big up TT. Yeah, hit the like, people. Hit the like. Yeah, but it's interesting that he decided to come back. Like, um... When he does, he's going to have to ride that wave because the media are going to bring it to him, bro. Like, you know, like talk sport and them dudes, you know what I mean? He's, he's going to have to try and appease them Simon Jordan's people because they're going to run flipping miles and miles of content off that. You know what I mean? Miles and miles of content of Dillian coming back. Has he served the ban? Has there been a ban? Why you say, I don't know. Dodge, he said, Dylan made me laugh that night. Yeah, he told Gary Cornish, you're shit. And Gary Cornish was just looking around like. <laughs> oh, dear. Wizards, he says, Dylan only loses to uppercuts. A punch while the car broke. One of many. Yeah, that's a good point. All these knockouts have been through that uppercut, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jam down. He says, 100% beats. Yeah, I'll preach tonight. No doubt. Jam down. No doubt. Big up, Dillian. Big up. Jam down. Naeem, he says, the O2 fight between AJ and White was big for the UK, especially London, coupled in with Stormzy. Yes. Yes. See? 
Stormzy, yep, who was exploding on the scene at the time, walking out AJ. That made AJ a star. Yeah, 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 yeah. He brought, he brought UK grime onto the big stage on a boxing night. You know what I mean? And you got to big up Eddie for that because there were people cursing Eddie out, you know, like, you know, the traditionalists, you know, bring that flat shit in here. And then he told him to go fuck off, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he told them after, after they complained, they told him to go fuck off. You got to big them up. Big that up, bro. Big that up. Yeah, Stormzy. Big up Stormzy. Yeah. Joe Stunner, he says, regarding Garcia, I think he's an accident waiting to happen. He's got a soft mental center and will basically quit when the heat's on him. Yeah, that, 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 that's um, got to be a worry for De La Hoya and them. Naeem says, amongst the younger generation, that fight was well known and got many younger people tuning in. Yes, it did. It did. Like you said, the Stormzy angle, we got the grime. And you, you know what it kind of celebrated for Matram, right? And this is no disrespect to Frank Warren. You see when that, that fight happened, yeah? Matram, if you watched Matram's crowds and the fight roster, Matram had more integrated crowds in terms of black, white, and other nations. You watch Frank's cards, right? The roster is very, and, and, and wasn't because Frank was being thin. Like, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that because you know what I mean. But Frank had to change it up. You know what I mean? Frank, that's that. That's when you start. You know, like you see the likes of Yard and them man and Daniel Dubois and Caroline Dubois. So he had to even go back on his position on women's boxing. You had to switch it up. You watch them Box Nations cards, right? You watch the Box Nations card back in the day. Sometimes you'd be scratching to see your ethnic face going in the ring or in the crowd. And that helped, you know what I mean, develop. Like Mat Matrum, they, cha they changed the face. They changed the face of what was going on a little. They did change the face. They did change the face. You know what I mean? D.O.B. Newley says, AJ battered white the whole fight except for a 45-second spell. Hey, Dillian landed some good body punches, man. And it was that, that obviously, the left hook. Raja, he says, hopefully we see white in big fights as a white fan. I'm happy he's back. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm glad to say him back, man. Like, um, like, like D.O.B. Newley said, like, there might be a limited window on what he can do. But it's still good to see him back. Hopefully, you don't pop again, man. Like, you know. I mean, like, I don't know what happened there. I don't even know if he served a ban. Who popped him? Was it UCAD or? No, it was it was Varda, wasn't it? It was the Varda that caught him out, bro. See, it was that extra layer that caught him out. See, if it's not the UK, dealing with a bounce in the ring, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It was that extra layer that caught Dillian, bro. The extra layer. That the rest of our promotional outlets over here are not using. That extra layer. The hideout. He says, good evening, big man beats. Big yourself up the hideout. You know what I mean? Got a lot to cover. Hope you enjoy the hangout. Everybody in there, Dodge. Big up Dodge. Wilder and Dillian on an undercard in Saudi. Sounds nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Joyce and Dillian, yeah. Yeah, I could go for that, man. Wilder and Dillian, boy. That, <laughs> that'd be tense, wouldn't it? <laughs> Lord, bro. I tell you what, yeah. Dillian punch harder than Joseph Parker. If Dillian catch, catch um, Wilder on that catch, see... I didn't think it was one step. I didn't think Dillian could do that catch and suit, shoot against Wilder. But watching Parker, Parker punch with Wilder. Yo, if Dillian turn over that catch and shoot on Wilder, Wilder's going kipping, bro. He's going kipping. That Wilder now, who's a fraction off his timing, you you keep going over the top like that. Dillian's gonna kip you, bro. He's gonna kip you. Kiplings, seriously, Mister Kipling. 
apple pie, apple turnover. You know what I mean? Flambe. Oh, listen, bro. You're going to get the Kiplings. <laughs> you got to sleep, mate. But then again, you know what I mean? Like, it could be the first time he gets knocked out. With, without the uppercut, you know what I mean? Wilder might just go straight down the pipe and put him to sleep because, you know, like, three knockouts by uppercuts, obviously, there, there, there has to be some issue with the punch resistance. D.O.B. Nuli says, don't put white in there with a guy like Caballel. What, too quick? Too much footwork, you think? Naeem says, White stays in Portugal, so he has no band to serve since he only gets licensed from the British Forks and Border Control on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. Sustained in Portugal meant there hasn't been no legal action taken. Well, I, I don't think that's actually true. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to delve through what you're saying there a little more. I'm not sure about that. Big up Bruce Gass. Bruce Gass. Salute, Bruce. Salute. Pick yourself up. Darren Christie. Garcia is like a 12-year-old. Come on, Darren, man. You know what I mean? 12-year-olds are way more mature than that. I'll say 8-year-old. Ryan is like a little, he's like a little child. Ryan is literally like a little child. Very immature young man. Very immature. Not in a bad way. Not immature like Tank, you know, like in the road accident, driving off or threatening people. You know, yeah, not, not, not in a, that way there, but just immature. Just an immature kid. Very immature kid. I don't know what that is, Darren. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. Tony, Toby, he says, Bruce Gass, salute, the OG. Yes, indeed. Wizards, Garcia, big money, small talent. Yes. Yes. Is he mentally where he needs to be to fight Devin Haney is the big question. Is that fight going to go ahead? He tried to shift the location back to Vegas. I had some idiot in the comment section saying, you're a grown man. You should know this because of taxes. It's for taxes. So, well, what receipts have you got for that? It's for taxes. We get down to New York for taxes. He wanted it back in Vegas or like because he's more accustomed to fighting in Vegas, the New York, you know, New York of Cali is where he wanted it. And even Devin is more accustomed to them venues than New York. I think Devin fought in the Hulu when he was a kid, he said. Uh, salute, salute, everybody. Salute, salute, salute. Does he? You must have a story for that. Big up, does he? The hideout. He says, with all due respect, Beats, I don't think White has a good enough de defense to avoid the Wilder right hand over 12 rounds. Well, it depends what White comes back. He might not have the chin. I, I think he's more the chin because the the the... Wilder that turned up against Parker was so telegraphed, like he kept going over the top with that right hand, didn't he? Like he doesn't know how to come around with a hook, he can't come underneath with an uppercut. You see, the thing with Joshua and why Ngannou is going to struggle because, yes, he has power, and if he can land early, he can do damage. But AJ can shoot uppercuts, probably the best in the division, he can do. 
pull counters, he can hook, and he can jab. He can throw all the punches, all of them. All of them. Guzzy says, I think he's had a six month shadow ban. Yeah, I think I think he, yeah, you could you could be right there, Guzzy. You could be right. Yeah. Dillian was the first fighter I heard said to put put it on Wilder. You always fancy that fight. Yeah, see, and that Wilder did not like that, right? Wilder had this 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 London stroke Jamaican thing coming at him. Yeah, I, I want to fight. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go, Wilder. Let's go. Let's go. And Wilder didn't like that. Wilder likes his opponents to buckle in front of him before he's got them in the ring. Like Ortiz, yeah, man, I'm grateful that like you you don't you don't send me back to Cuba. Hey, thank you, thank you for opportunity and all that shit there. He wants all that. He wants all that. That's what he wants from his opponents. And Dillian wasn't giving him that. Yeah, Dillian was coming with the bricky, that bricky bullshit, bro. Bricky, Cole Harbor Lane, Relton Road, Red Records, The Academy, The Fridge. Yes, indeed. That's what he was coming with, bro. Dylan was coming with brick, the bricks and bullshit, and he didn't like it. He didn't like it. Yeah? The LDBC could say what they like. He didn't like it. He, he wanted compliance. That's what he wanted. He wanted compliance, and he wasn't going to get that. Leon, what's good? Big up, Leon. Dodge. He said he watched the Parker Wilder fight back. And Wilder cannot throw the right hand properly anymore. It's like he's throwing it like he's hurt and no real confidence. Yeah, there was no belief. There was no belief in that shot. And when it didn't work, he didn't have another punch to fall back on. Yeah? In all truth, I know people are going to say great win for Joseph. Joseph should have knocked him out. And he nearly did. But Joseph should have knocked him out because he didn't have no arsenal. He didn't have no other punches he could throw. Guzzy, Devin said he smelt booze on Ryan's breath in the presser. I mean, what was up with that coming into the presser high? And there's pictures with him with a joint in his mouth. And I didn't report on that because I said, ah, oh, somebody photoshopped that. Apparently, no, that's, I mean, he was smoking, drinking, got the place thinking, if money smelled bad, man, that rice stinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playground immature, Darren. Yes, the, the maybe one of the most immature boxers I've seen, Ryan Garcia. Yeah, Arnold Babosa Naim. Yes, in the co-main for Haney versus Garcia could be there as a potential backup in case Ryan pulls out or messes things up. Very slight chance. I do think we're getting this fight. Jam down. Dillian got the Amir Khan type silent ban. Yeah, that, that's what it looks like. You know, because uh, I have a feeling he must have spoke to Robert Smith and said, yo, man, I'm going to apply for my license again. Is it all right? And, and before he made that announcement on, on, on his IG. Uncle Bernard. Bernard would batter Ryan now, in my honest opinion. Bernard would kick the shit out of him right now. 60 years plus, he kicked the shit out of Ryan. You know what I mean? Bernard still got more dog than Ryan Garcia. Oscar would probably hem him up a little if, if the coke, all the coke he's took hasn't taken a toll on him. Diobi Nuli, Ryan makes me laugh. He's not a serious boxer. He's going to make a bag load of money, though. Yeah. That's what it's all about with Ryan. You know what I mean? His, um... The notoriety, the popularity of the money. And that's good because, like I said, there's a lot of boxers who end their career and their bank balance doesn't reflect their endeavors. So it is what it is. Joe Stunner says, Ryan has the air of someone who's always had things his own way and can't handle anyone saying no. Haney will mentally unravel him when Ryan finds out he can't land his punches. Yeah, that that's what... It's going to, you know, 
like some defense movement and getting smacked in the face, what's Ryan going to do? What is Ryan going to do? You know? Anthony, extremely immature, talking about Jesus in one breath, then using foul language shortly after. I have changed my mind about his chances. I see him getting outboxed on the night. Oh, you thought he had a shot? Well, listen, you never know, Anthony. You never know. You never know. You never know. If he loses, says Anthony, I think he will fire Derek James afterwards. So if he loses, he would have went from Eddie Reynoso to Joe Goosen to Derek. Um, I, I don't think there'll be another after that. I, I, does, does he carry on if he gets beaten up badly? Because Ram, like um, Devin wants a stoppage. Devin wants to stop Ryan. He don't want to just beat him. He wants to stop him. Devin knows now he has to put some punctuations on his big wins. If there's going to be any opportunity of true greatness for Devin, he needs to punctuate them stoppages. Yeah? Punctuate them wins with stoppages. That's what he needs to do. Yeah, he could run back to Goosen. Goosen wasn't interested in Ryan. Goosen just said, yo, make sure that checks on time. You know what I mean? Goosen didn't care. Just dress up in them denims. You know what I mean? As long as you keep him dressed in them denims. You know what I mean, Ryan? You know what I mean? <laughs> Goosen's okay. Dodge. He said, Ryan is moving mad, smoking blunts, drinking gold thrones and talking nonsense. He's an odd person. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's the thing. You know, you come in there with a throne, high and goofy. When are we going to see the real... Is there a real Ryan? What is Ryan? When are we going to see a fighter who don't even have to say much? You know when a fighter... Doesn't have to say much. He, he just wants to do damage. He wants to go in there and execute. Doesn't even have to do much. You know? Case one. Dillian has him and Wallen as his Twitter profile. Makes you think. Does he? Him and Wallen. I didn't realize that. What's all that about then? What's all that about? Let's have a look. Dillian. Dillian, Dillian, Dillian. Twitter. Am I following Dillian? I'm sure I am. Has he got a Twitter profile? Okay. Might help if I spell it correct. And use L's rather than the apostrophes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I am following him. Oh, yeah, he was supposed to fight Otto, wasn't he? Remember that fight got cancelled? <laughs> dylan has got a picture of himself as a kid in his profile picture. <laughs> a big smile. Mad smile on his face. Anthony Mackin and Garcia's voice sounds gravelly those days, and that's a sign of alcohol misuse and smoking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, somebody's got to get the blame if he loses, Joe, you know what I mean? Yeah. After Haney beats him, Garcia has no idea on the concept of personal responsibility. Yeah, it's got to be someone's fault. It's got to be someone's fault. Okay, he admitted after the tank fight he was misusing alcohol. Wow. 
Darren Christie said, Peter Fury said, wait until he feels AJ's power. Boy, I tell you what, man. They're, they're, they're talking up in Garnu's chances. They're talking up in Garnu's chances. They are. They really are. They really are. Let's see what they're saying after the fight, though. Big up, Darren. Big up, Anthony Mackin at Joe Stunner. Well, someone will have to take the blame, and it's certainly not Ryan. Oh, Ryan, Ryan has no accountability. <laughs> Ryan don't take accountability for nothing, bro. You know what I mean? Byron says, is, Byron says Ryan can beat Devin. Yeah, he could. He could. If he gets it right on the night, he could. He could. You putting money on it, Byron? How much you putting on it? Joe Stunner says, the fridge, there's a blast from the past. Yeah, man, the fridge. Proper bricks in it. Yeah, me. The fridge. The fridge. True story, bro. There was a rap battle up there. And I couldn't get none of my friends to go. And I didn't have a car. I didn't have a car that fucking week. I didn't have a car. I went up there by myself from London Transport, bro. And <laughs> I done pretty well in the battle, though. I done pretty well in the <laughs> People say, you went by yourself? Yeah, of course I went by myself. Of course I went by myself. I mean... I mean, you dudes weren't coming, so what? What you mean? I was staying in my house, nah, bro. You know what I mean, yeah, went up there by train and had to take night bus back. Yeah, that's com commitment, isn't it? I used to like, I used to like the, the open mic though. Fridge Club was good though. It was, it was a bit, bit tatty at times. <laughs> I mean, Fridge Club. I used to like Fridge. I hate the light fridge, man. Leon, he says, could Ryan say saying he's high and releasing images for the promotion to get those pay-per-views up? Nah, Leon, the, the pay-per-view's gonna sell, man. Regardless, that that like who like what 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 crowd is that gonna appeal to by saying you're smoking and drinking? What what extra pay-per-view is that gonna do? That's not the image. The zone wanna promote either. You know what I mean? That's why I think Mauricio Sullivan was telling them, yeah, you're both young men. You've got to watch what you say and put out there because there's youngsters watching. No, nah, I doubt that very much. I don't think the zone were very happy. You know, that there's there's talk of rivals high and drunk. I don't think they were happy at all. That's not what they want to promote. Yeah, man. At Joe Stunner Boxing, I think that he will carry a case of crash and burn at a very young age. Nice. That's Anthony Mackin at Joe Stunner. Blow all his money then 10 years from later. Byron said, Rhodes man talk. What's Rhodes? Uh, I don't get it, Byron. Maybe you can elaborate a little. Everybody's got to be a road, isn't it? If you're urban, huh? Everyone got to be a bit of road. Anthony Mack and I have heard online that he's going through a breakup with his wife and he has some baby mother issues with some outside chick. Oh, gosh, that's all you need before a big fight, man, is a woman in your head. That's all you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Damn, man. Ryan... You know what I mean? What did then W say? W say you find them, you uck them, and you flee. You know, but before you do, yo, you take it to the hotel, to the motel. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Ryan, you're simping. I ain't gonna help you, bro. Oh. See, Bruce got that knowledge, bro. Bruce said Ryan wanted to fight in Las Vegas because they don't test for cannabis. In New York, they do. Ah. <laughs> Anthony Mack and Devin has to start sitting down in his punches. 
and sit in the pocket order to get the knockouts from there. I think we might see that in this fight. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. A little more sitting down in his punches. But he wants to make sure that, you know, he's got Ryan softened up. Softened up. He's a BC level fighter, said D. Obinuli. He can never beat Dev. Well, um, I wouldn't say never. I wouldn't say never. I wouldn't say never. I wouldn't say never, but it's unlikely. Francisco Bajardo, who promised a lot but tanked. At least while I was making a cute kid. I don't remember that name. Francisco Bajardo from the 90s. I don't remember that name, Joe. It's troubling me. I don't remember the name. Let's see. Francisco Bajardo. Francisco Bajardo. Okay, a Mexican boxer. Born in 1983. Francisco Bajardo. No, I remember him. It's not ringing a bell. What oh, wait? Five foot six. Okay, he fought a, you know, um, light welter. Lost to Steve Forbes in his last fight, split decision. Jesse James, Leia, Andre, he fought some names, got some decent wins. Okay. Mm. Not ringing a bell. Well, he wasn't in the contender series or anything like that, was he? I don't think so. No, it doesn't ring a bell. But yeah, there, there's loads of like that, Joe, you know, who had a bit of potential, but they couldn't get their head on the job, so to speak. Dodge, do you think Ryan behaves odd because he feels he's not loved? He's not a favorite with Mexican fans. He doesn't speak Spanish. And the tank loss was devastating. So surrounding himself with misfits. Ryan acts odd because he's insecure. You know what I mean? Searching and searching but can't find a cure. He's insecure. He's insecure. Yeah, he's insecure. He's a little insecure. That's what it is. So that's probably what the drug taking is all about. You know. You see, Devin is way more even killed than Ryan. Way more. Even the DAZN guy, Maddox, asked him what's up with his voice and he didn't give a proper answer. Yeah, listen. He's on self-destruction, you know what I mean, road right now. Self-destruction road. Rene, I wondered if Ryan would end up as the next Victor Ortiz, but it seems like Garcia won't even reach that level. Yo, Victor had the belt. He had, he had that one night against Andre Berto. That was a remember that fight. Who remembers Berto versus Ortiz? That was an excellent fight, man. I believe for the WBC welterweight title, I enjoyed that fight, bro. I enjoyed that fight. Hey, listen, that, that, that was a good little good area, though. The old HBO Golden Boy era. Who remembers Madonna versus Victor Ortiz? Did any, anyone remember them, these fights? Madonna versus Victor Ortiz. That was the first time I... Was that the first time I saw Madonna? Byron says, Tyson Fury, a plastic Christian, too. Laughing my ass off. Oh, shit. Plastic Christian. Case, what's up, Case? Big up, Jerome. Plastic Christian. <laughs> I 
I don't think he's a plastic. I think, you know, I mean, people take up religions and they don't always get it 100% right in their commitment to it. But I, I think he, I, I think, you know, I think, I think he believes in God. I think he believes in God. But I, I, I understand what you're saying, though. A lot of things that he says would contradict being a man of faith, perhaps, but. It's those of us who struggle, I guess, to um, be consistent who need it more than those who are consistent. Big up Jerome, Toby Bartlett, big up Ron A. I actually think Garcia will be fine, even if he won't be a good boxer. He seems a real talent in social media and he can earn a lot of money through it. Perhaps, perhaps. Listen, what's there to suggest that he just won't spiral into a world of drugs and madness, though? What's there to suggest he won't? Oh, you got a hundred bucks? I'm not a gambling man. <laughs> I can rub my mouth that I think Devin will win, but no. Nah. I'm not a gambling man. As soon as I gamble, you see Ryan's, Ryan's going to fight like Chavez Sr. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's how little Sanchez and Brock up, David. Anthony, he said, I agree with you, Beats. I don't think the zone were happy at all, especially with all Ryan swearing. Times have changed. Anything like can get you in trouble these days. No, they, they don't want that. They certainly don't want that. You see, the fight itself, it sells. And they want the two protagonists to go in there and, you know, have a little banter. But you've got, you got to be on the periphery with the language. And, you know, drug talk and taking, that, that's certainly not certainly not good. Dodge says to the whole holiday in. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep this one up, Emmanuel. Don't worry. I'm going to keep this one up. The reason I, like, if if um, the topics stray out and there's too much stuff that, you know, doesn't need to be on there, I'll normally take them down. I'll normally take them down, but I've got to try and clean them up. Now, now I'm doing more streams consistently. I've got to try and keep them, you know, on topic, so to speak, on topic. Yeah, yeah, it will be up. Don't worry, it will be up. Jerome says, salute to the legendary Bruce Gass. Salute, Bruce Gass. Big up, Bruce Gass. Ryan looks too young, says Joe, to even be married. Who's he trying to divorce? His parents? <laughs> Jam down. Devin certainly looked like his punches had a bit more pop at 140. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Dio Benuli, do I think Ryan can beat Regis? And the short answer to that is no. I don't. I don't. No. I don't. Regis has been in hard fights. Even with Ryan. Even, hey, listen. You know when you can tell someone's a good fighter is when they're not good enough to beat someone is when you can tell someone is a good fighter. It's when you're not good enough to beat someone and you hang in. And you hang in there. Regis, Regis, Regis he showed us in that Josh Taylor fight and, and the Devin fight. He hangs in. He can hang in. No, I don't think Ryan could beat Regis' program. No, I don't. Ryan did an IG where he was answering questions from fans and he was staring, stoning throughout the live. He confirmed to the fans that he was smoking some blunt and that was minutes before the presser. I mean, what is that? 
that that sounds like someone trying to sabotage the fight. Sounds like he's trying to sabotage the fight. And look, the carryover from when was it last year? It was early last year with Tank, probably about eight nine months ago, where he was stopped by Tank. It's not a long not a long time, and the Duarte fight that that finish yell he was doing he didn't look very impressive. He finished the fight well though. He did finish the fight well with some good power punches. Wizards, he says, the current Ingarnu love is ridiculous. Yeah, well, you know, um, the performance against Fury, it shocked a lot of people. Jerome, he says, running seems to be cashing out. And re was that running? Or Ryan seems to be cashing out and ready himself, readying himself to take off like a thief in the night. Brent, he says, Ryan won't even beat Regis in his opinion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to um, make a case. Hard to make a case for him beating Ryan. But there could be upsets. You know what I mean? There could be upsets. Maybe on the 8th next Friday, AJ gets it wrong. Maybe um, would would, would um, what would um, you said knocking out Fury would that be an upset if he knocked him out? And what if Fury? What if you said loses? Would that be an upset in your opinion? Who's the favorite? Although you know, I don't really go too much by the the betting favorites. Okay, Bruce watched Madonna and Brona yesterday. Yeah, Madonna's been in some good fights, man. That, I tell you what, that fight with Ortiz, when Ortiz was in Golden Boy, like Ortiz had some serious mental issues, bro. Like he started off quick and he, I think he dropped Madonna early. And Madonna wasn't known. He wasn't known like that. Yeah? And Ortiz was a top amateur. He outpointed Amir Khan in the Amis. And he was, you know, the hot shit in Golden Boy. And Ortiz come back and they... Bam, bam, like, whoa, I've got to watch that. That was a bad fight. And Madonna ground him down and took him down. And after the fight, you see the mental toll it took on Ortiz. He says, I'm too young, man. I shouldn't be getting beaten up like this. I'm too young to be getting beaten up like this. You saw, like, the mental, you know, toll the fight took on him. That, oh, oh boy. There were some good fights back then, you know. Good fights, bro. Good fights. Let me see if I can find that. Because after I won't mind watching it, you know. That was a good fight, man. Action packed, but high speed, high speed boxing. You get what I'm saying? Hard punches being thrown. Like, because Ortiz had them fast hands and he had power in it. He was good to watch, man, when he was a youngster. He was good, bro. Victor Ortiz. But, you know, he had his limitations. But he got it right against um, Berto that night. I, I thought Berto was going to clean him up. And they traded knockdowns. Yeah, man. Hold on a Have they got it? Yes, 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 yes. It's there, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden Boy. HBO, bro. This is this, this is the, this is the prep, like you know HBO, man. Like this is just like bridging the TV era into the social media era. You know what I mean? That fight. I didn't know who Madonna was. Who's this Madonna? Yeah, man. Let me check the poll. Let me check the poll. Let me check. I should. I, I, in fact, I should have put the poll. I don't know why I do polls in Twitter. You know? I know I'm flipping um, participates. You do them on, on Google. You get a serious sample size, bro. You know what I mean? 
Look, there isn't like a hundred flipping votes yet. If I'd done it on Twitter, it would have been, I mean, on, on Google or on YouTube. And then about 200 odd votes. So they've got, okay, the poll. Let's, oh, big up, Bruce. Big up, Bruce. Beats, what's happening, my brother? Yeah, man. Just just chilling. Just chilling, you know. Share, sharing some thoughts on the boxing with the people. I, I hear that, man. You know, I've, I've been watching Ryan the last couple of days with, with his weed, man. And, um, I, I you know, you, you know me, bro. When it comes to weed, I don't think anybody on YouTube and the boxing community has more experience on the negatives and the positives of, of, of this substance. And, uh, see, Ryan, like I stated in, in the chat earlier, he wanted to have this fight in Las Vegas because since uh, 2021, Nevada hasn't been testing for, for THC in, in the blood. Whereas, whereas the New York State Athletic Commission, they still test for it. And they not only test for it, but they test for levels. They test for the nanograms per milliliter in your blood. And New York caps it at 150, which is defined as an every other day user, borderline habitual user. It's, it's, a, pretty high, it's a pretty high tolerance. But uh, see, Ryan, Ryan's playing in some pretty dangerous waters because he's messing with his, with his money. And, and he could possibly be, um, it could possibly be called a no contest if he wins. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not just a little slap on the wrist anymore, especially when you're dealing with, with a commission that has a, uh, a stringent set of drug enforcement uh, laws in their, in, their, uh, in their bylaws. Wow. So um, I need to ask you this. So when you say that there's tolerance levels, do, do you have to have a, a certain amount before they, they, they'll suspend you? Or is like for boxing, if they catch you, even like the slightest amount will they suspend you? No, no, no. There, there is an amount. It's it, it's it's 150 um, on on n ngs per milliliter. So it's nanograms per milliliter, and they can and and they test it from like 15 nanograms up to 600 nanograms. So they can tell if you're just a casual user or if you're a, a chronic user like myself, and and that's what they. I, I guess that's what they don't want. So, so you know, Ryan. See, he, if he could, he could stop now because the thing about THC is it's a fat soluble substance, so it stays in your system for uh, up to thirty days. You usually oh, thirty days and over, depending on on your your body fat percentage content. And Ryan has a low body fat percentage, so it won't stay in his system long. But if he wants to, if he wants to do it smartly and safely, he, he'll quit now. And, and 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 his body will be to be detoxified by the time they take the drug test. If not already taking them now, you know, if they're not already uh, 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 testing them, because I mean, he's claiming that he's doing blunts while he's training. I mean, he's gone a little bit overboard. It's a it's a great product to use, but it, but it's got to be used sensibly. Great for after training, for for the uh, anxiety, for stress, for for relaxation. But I mean, you know, when you're when, when you're in the gym training, you don't want any of that in your body. You want to be sharp as a tack. You want to remember what your trainer is telling you. You know, if you're if you're a nano of a second off, that could be life or death. So, I mean, you don't need that in your body when you're training. And you know, and additionally, you don't wake up with a hangover from marijuana. So, so, so the next day, your your, your mind is clear. Um, I mean, you know, Ryan has got to be sensible about it. Uh, and, and the best thing he could do would be to stop right now until after the fight. Yeah, Keyshawn Davis, he got busted the other week, didn't he? Yeah, and, and and he and he didn't use it for, for his last performance. And look look how look how uh, how decent he looked. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's um like um I think a lot of boxers use it, but like look if you get caught with it, fair enough. A lot of people use marijuana. Like the world is stress filled. I don't smoke no more, but I'm not one of the people. Oh, you shouldn't smoke. I know why people smoke because the world is full of flipping stress. But the fact that you would go on your social media platform and tell people that you're doing it. That shows that there's something wrong with the kid. There's something not mentally right with the kid. I agree. You know, like all that money, look how, how much money he stands to make. I, I'm not sure, see, he's probably um, conflicted that he doesn't believe he can beat Devin. I don't believe he believes it. But with all that money on the table, he can't walk away from it. But at the same time, he doesn't want to go in there and embarrass himself. So he's conflicted, I reckon, right now. Yeah, right. You can you can just tell by listening to Ryan that that, that he's he's immature. 
and he's a head case. He has he has a lot of money. And he even mentioned the other day how he came from a from a poor family. You know, when when Devin was talking about his 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 parents had to had to set up the ring, had to judge the fight, had to had to work the parking. You know, be, and and Ryan came out and said it. He said, "Yeah, you know, my parents were poor. They took me to tournaments, and because they were judging, we got a free hotel room." But uh, I mean, you can see, man. You know, you grew up like that, and and all of a sudden you get a taste of of multi cash. It can change a person, especially a young person like that. When 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 he's probably, you know, I mean, weed is probably the least of his problems. Who knows? But um, I mean, this is um this is a kid. I you, you can see he's had mental problems, and he admits it. You know, he admitted it yesterday in the press conference. Yeah, I had I had mental problems. Uh, you know, what, what are you going to say about that? And, you know, Devin kind of, I mean, Devin was cool as a cucumber. Devin, I think Devin is going to give him a whooping in this fight. I don't even think it's going to be much of a contest, to be honest with you. But um, I think Ryan, I, 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 he's going to take it more seriously. I mean, you know, his career, if you eat, but, you know, you have to buckle down. There's only a few years when you're going to be making prime dollars. You can do all that shit after you make your money, after you retire. I mean, you got to buckle down. And I mean, dude, in like three or four years, Ryan can become a multi-millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of money out there. A lot of love for him to make. And he doesn't really want to mess that up like that, surely. And not only that, he's going to be messing up the Golden Boy people's money. Like Robert Diaz and Oscar Bernard and the shareholders, they must be just panicking. That, What's this kid doing? What is he doing? You know, yeah, he should. He he should be get be in the gym training better. Who who's he with now? Now he's with um with Derek James, right? Right. And he he was bounced around from from one trainer to the other. He couldn't he couldn't find his niche. If what what he has to do is he has to really get 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 a, a bonding with Derek James and be in that gym and and just concentrate on bettering yourself because he's got great natural talent. But it seems like all the other lightweights, of the other 135 pounders of, of, of this era, they're surpassing Ryan. Because Ryan is, I mean, you know, he he doesn't care about it. His mind is elsewhere. He likes the he likes the broads. He likes the, the weed. He likes the, the fast cars. He likes everything. But uh, you know, he, he, frankly, he, moderation. That's his problem. And here's the problem. I, I think, right, Bruce. Right. When I was young, and I used to smoke, like. It was basically just grass. But nowadays, like what, like towards the end of when I was smoking, there was all this chronic hydroponic, like like the skunk that they're smoking is too much. Whatever, like it's not. It's not like you can grow. You can grow natural skunk. You know what I mean? You can grow it more natural. But the stuff that's on the street, it's like powdered up and. I don't know. I don't know what he's taking. Like, well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you exactly what it is because this was a question in my mind. I mean, I've been I've been puffing this stuff since 1969, and I've seen all the various strengths. And 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 what you see now is like ungodly. You're seeing grass with up to 30 percent and more THC. So I I did a, I did a little bit of research. It doesn't take much because you know these these labs they have to be up front with you when they do the when they do the testing. And and, and what I noticed in my on one of the labels of a pre-roll, it says this this product contains one gram of flour and 0.3 grams of dissolent. So that means that they're they're spiking the weed with uh you know with the extracted weed like the the dabs the um you know the uh, the tincture what they extract from it they're putting that back into the flour so they're making they're making flour that is off the charts and, and who knows they could make it even stronger they'll make it where you take one hit and you might have to sit down for 15 minutes you know it's going to be this is this is what they're capable of doing today but it's not that it's grown any stronger they fortify it with with, with the extract so it's just it just has the natural thc put right back into the product it doesn't have any artificial artificial additives it just has the natural additive that's been taken out fortified and put back in so it's a it's a crazy world man this this weed today you're right if you're saying it's not like it was when we were kids it'll definitely retard these fucking kids today if they smoke too much of it yeah yeah because um i was listening to the radio this was this was probably um maybe about 15 20 years maybe about 15 years back and there was a lady on there on the radio she was saying like she works um in mental health and she said 
a lot of the patients are coming in now and the, the cause that exacerbates their condition is weed. But she said it's not the weed that she knew when you know she was coming up in the job in the 70s and 80s. You know what I mean? It's like it's this these crazy different strains. And if Ryan's taking that stuff there, I'm telling you that the, the last thing he needs is a boxing ring. The last thing is a boxing ring. I'm telling you yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, Joe? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yes, yes. We're just talking about the comeback of Dillian and the uh, the issue kid, Ryan, a kid who seems to have a lot of issues. Yeah, Probably. I've been listening in. Um, I think, uh, obviously, this is only a guess, but I think with Ryan, what will probably happen is um, he'll get his arse handed to him by Haney, and then he'll reveal that he was having all these mental health stroke addiction issues. And he'll give a complete sort of mea culpa. And then what will happen is his story, if you like, which will be a, will light up social media, which is really his main domain rather than a boxing ring. Uh, what will happen is um, that will be his story. You know, the, the comeback from from mental health and, you know, uh, addiction issues. And, uh, you know, he'll probably have a book out and that will be his thing. And he'll drift away from boxing. But. I definitely think Haney will smash him up. It'll be a stoppage. And I think probably what will happen is Ryan will drift away from boxing. Yes. Yeah, he he, do, he doesn't seem like uh, somebody who's going to win a belt and defend against all comers. I, I just don't think he's got the discipline. No. Same, same way if he takes setbacks. I don't, I don't think he's the type of guy who will go away, reflect, and do so, the, the soul searching and try and come back harder. I don't think he's that guy. I don't think he's that guy. No, I think if you look at what if you look at one of the fighters who's going to fight tomorrow, which is Sam Eggington. I mean, can you imagine if, if Ryan had Sam Eggington's fighting spirit and that resiliency and that unbelievable will to win? Um, you put that talent with that type of mindset, you got yourself a, a really formidable fighter. But he's the polar opposite. He's just got that soft center where. There's an entitled immaturity about him, which other people have commented on, and I, I don't think he's going to be able to get over that for, for quite a few years. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see it. I, 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 I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. People mature at different rates, and this this kid is he's he's one of the he's going to be a, uh, he's going to mature late. Let's put it that way. So, what, what do you guys think about Adelian White? come back not not gonna happen or just she's just she's just gonna get knocked out again like in against Vivek and AJ and Fury or you interested hey you know in the heavyweight division man all you have to do is win one fight and already you know you're you're, you're thought of as as a contender once again and and if Dillian White is is matched properly I don't know if he's gonna take a tune up or if he's gonna go right into a fight I mean I, I heard today Deont I heard today Deontay Wilder was a possibility and man that would that, that would definitely perk my interests up regardless of who wins the fight it's definitely um it's it, it's interesting and uh and dillian white can make some money and bring some spark back into the heavyweight division he can pretty much write his own ticket because he's he's got a name he's beatable and and and, and he he can also uh he can also beat almost any heavyweight out there so yeah it's, it's I, I think it's a it's a uh, i think it's a good move i'm i'm, I'm interested in doing white's uh next move yeah, me too. What about you, Joe? I think he, I think he's entertaining because he's vulnerable, but at the same time he can still hit. So uh, I don't like the idea of his punch resistance. I think if he gets hit clean, he'll go. Probably uh, it will be a bit of fun to watch, but I don't see him really regaining any of his best form. I think he's he's probably got too many miles on the clock. I can see him going down to Saudi and making himself a few million. Be, be make money. Yeah. Make money. He's exciting. Yeah. So if, he, if you're an exciting fighter, there's always going to be someone who wants to sign you. you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, too. Say that again, Bruce, please. I said that's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Price fighting, and it's about the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, you know, like, Dillian, you know, like, 
he knows how to talk a fight up, and if he can get himself in shape, and you know, maybe get, get some a couple of good bodies on there, he could be in the mix. I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. How old is he now, Dillian? Thirty-five. Thirty-five, 35 now. 35. Oh, okay. That's not ancient for a heavyweight, is it? Well, no. it's not really. Depending on how you preserve your body, it's not. It's not a death sentence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just. I'm very interested about. The, the, there's. They're arguing about, and, and we won't stay too long on this. About the rights or wrongs on. Ryan dating holy fans models like Brent, he's not with it. Um, the obviously says Russ wrong with dating holy fans model with a few people. Um, I don't know, it just it depends, really. Like, if you take them serious, then yeah, it could be problems, you know. See, that's why he's having issues as well. That them type of women he's dating bring nothing but problems, like them holy fans girls, they're high maintenance, and like eventually, see, women. Women, you got to look at women uh, on how they're going to reflect back on you because it's, it's the transfer of energy, yeah? And certain mm -hmm. women are a drain on your energy. Yeah. Certain women, their anxiety, you know, after a time, you don't realize they pass it on to you. Transference. Yes, 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 yes. And if he's around the wrong women, yeah, he, he's asking for the hands. <laughs> he's asking for them to give him the hands, man. Yeah, he's, he's asking for them to take his money, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. as well. Obviously. Isn't that his world, though? You know, that's that's kind of Ryan's world, isn't it? You know, like Instagram, OnlyFans, social media. That's really his his platform to fame and I don't know. I mean, he makes he's making money out of boxing, which is good, great, good luck to the kid. But um, it was if he hadn't had that social media presence. He probably wouldn't have got as many opportunities promotionally in boxing as he has done. Okay. Yeah, we have a we have a social media uh, phenomenal fighting this weekend. Jake Paul yeah. is on that Amanda Serrano card, and and I wouldn't be surprised to see Ryan Garcia if if he uh, if he doesn't succeed against Devin Haney to to move on to that circuit. You know, take on some of those uh, some of those uh, YouTubers and some of those fucking Instagrammers. I think no. you prefer that. I think that's what he really wants to do, ideally. I can see it. Yeah, because that way, you know what I mean, he, he could probably smoke a blunt and, you know, like, <laughs> although they, they have serious testing if he's on the Misfits and stuff. They, I mean, like, um, the PBA on the Misfits is serious testing. But um, Guzzi said, today's weed is too strong. It's hard to go to 25% THC straight away. Brick weed back in the day was around four percent THC. Yeah, you see, like um, I tell you what, like when I when I used to work in in, in the studio, just up the road, the kids used to say, "Oh man, look, look at the weed you're smoking, man! It's crap, it's rubbish, because it's just grass." And I said, "Boy, hey, at least I'm not going to end up in as a mental patient." <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't need to smoke with your smoke. Whatever it is, like hydrophonic, chronic skunk. No, I don't need it. I don't need that, bro. I don't need to get the high that bad. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, baby. I hear you. Hey, listen, man. I'm, I'm going to have dinner now. I'll be listening in, okay? Okay, guys? Hey, Bruce. Take care, brother. All right. Peace out, Joe. You too, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. Cheers. Wow. Maidana Khan was a great fight, said Jerome Benjamin. Yes, it was a good fight. Did you see, I'm just saying, I'm out of it. did you see Maidana versus Victor Ortiz, Joe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was the one where um, Ortiz kind of quit, didn't he? There was a couple of knockdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was a good fight. Great fight. Up and down, yeah. you know. And, yeah. But, but he had ability, didn't he? Ortiz had real ability, but he just couldn't quite put it together mentally yeah he had that one great night against uh, Berto yeah you know and it worked out but yeah basically he, he just um he, he he was he he was a head case he was a head case he was just a yeah. total head case 
they fought. Did they fight a second time and he got stopped? Or two's got stopped in about four. Um, yeah, yeah. Berto's done him second time round. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He done him but, second time round. But that that whole little era, that mini era of Berto, Ortiz, Madonna, that was a good little, good little period of boxing, wasn't it? For like a couple of years, where well, they were all sort of oh, fighting. Listen, that, that period there, Golden Boy and HBO, like it was good. It was like good yeah. quality fights, and there wasn't that like. There wasn't as much pay per view as what the PBC are putting out, you know. Yeah. yeah. And you know, like the American product, it, it, it wasn't. I, I don't know what Al Heyman's done to that. I think Al Heyman has done a bad disservice to American boxing. I want to pick up D Style. Appreciate the super chat. It's a shout out to the OG Beats. Thank you, thank you, D Style. Big yourself up. Yeah, like um. It was enjoyable, man. Like, you used to transfer from Showtime to HBO. And for the most part, it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. And at times we used to complain. But, you know, when you look back at it now, you know. Yeah. I I, I don't, don't know why people would complain about any of those fights or fighters. I mean, they were – that was a good little round robin of, of fights that went on between about four or five guys. And like you say, there was there were so few pay per views nowadays. Yeah. The whole damn place is awash with pay per views, and it's you having to pay, you know, three or four times just to watch a fight. You know, like <laughs> you got your subscription, and you got your pay per view, and then you got your TV license, and it's like <laughs> Jesus Christ, when's it going to end? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you know, look like. People have got to watch, like, for the, the money they have. You can't just blow all your money. So you can't, like, spend, what, 600 pound subscriptions or whatever, 400 pound. And then I don't know how much in pay-per-views. You know what I mean? Like, you're talking over a, a, a thousand pounds to watch sport. Like, like, yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's madness. Yeah. Especially when it's, well, it's kind of like football. I mean, I, I don't follow football anymore. And one of the reasons why is because... The whole thing just became this gigantic sort of money machine and whereas when i was growing up it used to be a working class thing you know you go to like i'm an arsenal fan so i know you're, you're spurs so i apologize in advance but <laughs> 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 but you know you'd go down there whether it's white heart lane or it used to be hybrid and you yeah, get yeah, in no, and it was working class sort of thing now gee, i mean what is it roy king called them the prawn sandwich brigade i mean they took I over tell what, yeah. nah. i tell you what when i was a kid yeah, when I was a kid, we would roll up to White Hart Lane, and it would be about fifty p admission as a kid or something, yeah. something or a pound or something. And if you couldn't afford the fifty p, you could wait until half time and then open the gates and you could go in, right? Yeah, yeah. And then on the weeks they they were playing away, you could watch the reserves for free. You could just walk in and watch the reserves for free. Yeah, anyone like you see like dads taking their kid. And it wasn't full up, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't big cr crowds. What's the reserve games? And just, even if you was an adult, you could just walk in and pay on the turnstiles, and it wasn't that much. Yeah. But now, like, phew, it's like, oh, gosh, since they made it an all-seater stadium thing, and the football itself has been influenced by the continent, I don't, li I, I don't, I don't like watching Premier I used to love Premier League. I don't like watching it. Yeah, I don't like watching it. it. To be honest, it bores me. It's all... Well, I, uh, I ain't going to go on a rant here. Um, instead, I'll just I'll just mention a quick sort of little anecdote from my my past where, I, you, you, you know, Arsenal they they train at London Coney in Hertfordshire, and right. I went to see a a match between St Albans City and the Arsenal reserves, and I stood there like watching the match, and then my mate who I was with tapped me on the shoulder. He said, "Look behind you." I looked over my shoulder. Was, remember Keith? Well, you will you will remember Keith Birkinshaw. Oh um, yeah, top the manager. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was standing behind me. It was like, <laughs> just on these, you know, these terraces of these of this sort of, you know, eight tier team. He just turned. I don't know what the hell he was doing there because it was Arsenal reserves, but maybe he was trying to poach a couple of players. But those little experiences have gone now from football, unless you go non-league, and it ain't really part of the culture. It's 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 way way above what it used to be, and you know, season tickets are an insane amount of money and. The whole thing's just, you know, like the more money you've got, the more chance you've got of winning. Like, I mean, I know that's always been the case, but how many how many English teams in the Premier League are actually owned by people from this country? Well, it, 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 it is a point because 
if you go back to like the old first division days, there wasn't no foreign investment, Abramovich's and right. a whole like Middle East investment. So basically, yeah. you know, it was it was grassroots investment, and nobody plowed that much money like like to, in, in comparison to the other teams. It was more even. It was definitely more even. Yeah. And um, no, I, I just, just like I can't watch whole like. Most of the teams like they all play the same, and I have to watch match of the day. I watch match of the day on Sunday morning. That's what I do, so I, I can catch the highlights again. I, I can't can't be sitting through ninety minutes of, of the, these games. You know what I mean? But obviously, you'll remember, you know, our delays and Via coming over. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was a big deal. Oh, a couple of Argentinian guys are coming over here and playing in our league. Wow, you know and. And then it's sort of a little, I mean, 10 years or whatever it was later, you had um, Klinsman, didn't you, came over and there were a few yeah, others. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, it's around, just... Around it's just, that time, Ipswich had the two Dutch guys, Arlen Muren and Franz Tyson. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember it, yeah. 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 But yeah, if you go yeah. if you go back before that, you know, there were, there were some interesting characters, like there's some real sort of cultural... It's kind of reflected the British culture. Like, you remember uh, West Brom, Three Degrees, was it Brendan Batson and right. Sir Regis and Laurie Cunningham? Yeah. yeah. My mum used to look after Laurie Cunningham when he was a baby, yeah. Oh, really? Well. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, did, didn't he die in a car accident? Yeah, he, he did. I believe yeah. in Spain because he was at Real Madrid. Was it in Spain, I think? Yeah. Yeah, it was a shame, man. Yeah, it was a shame. It was a shame. It was a shame. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a bit, bit too. Is I, 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 I'm out of touch with football anyway. I'm out of touch. Yeah, oh yeah. I, some of my friends still think it's great. I think no, nah, I don't. I don't think it's that great. No. I, I mean, I, I know someone who, who supports Man City, and they're saying, I say, you know, that come on, you know, without the the Arab money, you'd still be in the yeah, up in second division. And he said, yeah, we would, we would, but that's just the modern game. And don't forget, I used to spend money going to watch, you know, away matches at Brent. Brentford or whatever. So I don't begrudge them their little moment in the sun, but when it just comes down to throwing an insane amount of money at just winning trophies, it to me it it don't reflect the culture. It's not of interest to me personally. If other people well, like it, that's fine. Well it was, man, like um if you go back to the areas I'm talking about, the teams were developed from the youth team programs, like right. you know, they were building to, uh, like players, uh, like developing them to, to play in the first division. And now they just go, over, go, you know, and just just transfer everything from foreign. You know what I mean? Do you remember, you remember the Liverpool yeah. team of the seventies? There was they were all Liverpoolians. Yeah. Were, you know, they all had the same fucking haircut. You know, but they might be from the same town. But they were they were winning European Cups, and then the whole damn team virtually was was from they were they all grew up within spitting distance of each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Terry McDermott, yeah. that was one of my favourites. I used to like Terry McDermott. You know, yeah, Terry like, McDermott. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was about. Like home produced players, and then look, it's, it, it was always great to have like the. The foreigners come over because you know you'd see different techniques and you know yeah it, it added variation but i don't know you can't you can't you can't turn the clock back you can't turn the clock back. no you can't you can't i mean this is a this has been a kind of a nostalgic little trip down memory lane but um but i have to be honest i mean okay if i was a younger person i'd probably feel differently but the age i am now which is 56 i mean i'm i'm inevitably i'm gonna compare the old with the new and i preferred the old it's just personal choice. Yeah, I remember going to the old um, Highbury, but I think the last time I went, Arsenal beat us one nil, and Pat Jennings did that. So I think it was Garth Crooks. He cracked the shot on his left foot, and I was there celebrating already like an idiot. <laughs> and somehow Pat Jennings plucked that ball out of the top corner. Was he was great. Yeah. He was great. Great, great, great. great. He played for both, of course. But yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, do, you remember yeah. that, do you remember that incident with Garth Crooks when he headbutted someone? It was like considered to be so outrageous. Do you remember that? It was, I think it was, I do, you know. I think I do. I think I do. <laughs> it was all about to the day. Oh, you know, this is disgraceful behaviour. He headbutted a player. And like, you know, did, did you not watch Leeds in the early 70s? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Bremner and all that. Like. Bremner, Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. They they were ruthless. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they were yeah. ruthless, man. Yeah, but that that's were. what made players like George Best so great because they were playing against these real hackers. These guys who were going to break your legs, and it was he was still sort of dancing around him like a like a ballerina or something, <laughs> scoring these outrageously brilliant goals. I mean, I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Justin Fashionu, man, like um, he went in that, to that tackle with Gary Mabbitt from Tottenham and he done serious damage to Gary. I don't, don't know that if was remember. through his eye, wasn't it? He busted yeah, his eye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the other one that was horrible, it was um, the European Championship. It was France versus Germany. And it, was it Schumacher? Yes. The goalkeeper, when he... Um, Battistone. Yeah, that was like, yeah, he flattened the guy, he broke his teeth out and everything. Yeah, knocked him out and clean out. That was yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't even get booked. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't even get a yellow for that. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it was a lot more of a physical game then. You know what I mean? Like, in, oh, in God. that context, a lot tougher. See, see, that's another thing that, that puts me off. It's this, the diving, you know, and it, now it's called, it used to be called cheating. Now it's called winning a penalty. <laughs> well, world, you know, you're cheating. You're diving. You're cheating. If you're diving, you should get booked or sent off or whatever. But no, nah, it, it ain't my thing now. It's just it's full of it's it's got a soft centre now. It used to be tough, like a proper physical game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's all about that continental game now, isn't it? Like they yeah. try to pass the ball into the net, and like everything. There's no like like Holland used to spray them long passes, and all right. You don't want to go back to Wimbledon playing long balls every second, yeah. but bloody hell. Sometimes like you gotta kick the ball long. You gotta <laughs> like gosh, man. Over like Tottenham Tottenham tried to overpass the ball against City and they got they got caught out because City were better at that game than them, you know what I mean? Yeah. They got caught caught out and lost got knocked out in the FA Cup. That and at, at that point it wasn't because Tottenham lost. It was this the night. I said, I'm not watching no more 90 minute Premier League games. And I said, that, That's it. That's it. I'm not watching no more. Yeah. Match of the day is about my limit. Occasionally I'll watch the odd 90 minutes. Um, maybe if it's a big tournament or a locker. I, I still enjoy the FA Cup, even though I'm not keen on the Premier League. The FA Cup still holds some sort of a feel. World Cup. I'll watch the World Cup. That's yeah, right. that's good. Yeah. World yeah, World Cup. Yeah. I mean, that, that's my limit right now, is World Cup. As Anthony Macca said the same thing. And just as I went and scrolled down, he said, I will watch the World and Euros. Yeah, I watch the Euros as well, Anthony. I yeah. watch the World and the Euros. But I am selective with the games I watch. The style of play, the type of footballers are not inspiring to watch either. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's right. Yeah, I agree with Anthony. Yeah. And what it is, I think, you know, what the, the, they're looking for athletes as well. So most of the players are probably six foot and you know they're like bodybuilders not you know, or you know it's not it's not just about being a baller mm. you know so, yeah. yeah well it's 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 scientific isn't it you know it's it's that now you're sort of almost building and a football gen player gen genetically modifying the players yes basically. yeah you could say that yeah 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 you know um, it ain't just about skill. I mean, Christ Almighty! Do you remember the, the days when we, you know, you had people like Malcolm McDonald? They they go down the pub afterwards, or they they have a drink before the game. Now, you know, they, they won't. You won't get any of these modern players, you know, sipping a can of. Oh, coke. you couldn't do that now. Like, um, mm. like the Italian. Like when a couple of footballers went over to Italy, like uh, Italy, like Ince, and they saw the diet, and a couple of the coach. No, you can't do that now. They 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 throw you out the club. Yeah. Like. The food they were serving up, like pre-match meals, you could, you could, you could, you could dream of serving that up now. Yeah, like, yeah. chips and pie, and <laughs> down, down a beer and a cigarette. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> you know, if, if that guard yellow saw that, he'd be doing his nut. Do you ever see that that famous picture of Jack Charlton smoking a cigarette on the, when he's on the pitch? You ever see that the, the famous photo? I can imagine because you know, that, that that's just Jack all over, isn't it? You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> Jack all over, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just didn't care. It was like this is a game. This is a game. This is a sport. Now it's you know, you're you're building people from scratch. You're building these almost like robots or androids because it's a huge, multi-billion-dollar 
a multi-billion pound yeah and everyone wants their slice of the pie you know like Stan Bowles he died the other day he did yeah yeah and um you know he 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 you know he, like he was a playboy women gambling and yeah. booze and you know Frank Worthington oh yeah Frank things Worthington. like that yeah man and um yeah, yeah. I think it was one of the when um, Ferguson took over United, there was a bit of a drink culture there, wasn't there, with people like Paul Ince and is it Paul Ince I'm thinking of, or is it is it the Irish fella? There was a few of them that used to go boozing and straight yeah, away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, they used to go out and booze. Yeah, see, Diaby Newley's got it. Most of the team tried to copy Pep's tactics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of the teams. You know what I mean, like. The, I was watching. To, I used to, Tottenham had a, a, a reputation of playing good football. We didn't win a lot of trophies. Lot of, you know, we used to win the FA Cup quite a bit. We used to play good football. And the recent times I watched them, a couple of ninety minutes games. I said, I'm not watching this no more. I mean, mm. I'm not watching this. I'm not yeah. used to Tottenham playing like that. I'm not watching that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was like when when we had um, when we were winning titles, Arsenal winning titles. You know, it was the old one nil to the Arsenal routine. Um, it, it wasn't attractive football. They won a couple of titles, but and then Wenger came along and kind of souped it up a bit, and there was more of that sort of Ajax from the seventies vibe about them. But it was more, at least it was it was better to watch. But to me, it's entertainment. You know, I, a lot of people will say, as long as my team wins, I don't care. But to, even when I was into football, I wanted to be entertained because. Otherwise, what's the point? No, I, I, I don't agree with that, man. Because as good as, as successful as Serie A was, I never like, they used to put like Italian football on on Channel Four. I didn't watch it. I used to watch sometimes. I, I did watch sometimes, but like, Lord God, man, it's dull. We persisted in the shit. Like, come, come on, man. Like, Lord, come on, man. Nah, nah. No. If it's not, if you're not being entertained, what's the point of watching it? It's, you might as well do something else. It's so boring. I know it's great technique, the way they trap the ball and put, it was good. I know that, but yeah. flipping hell. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember Mr. Ty made us play like that. It's, if if you're playing that type of football, then it's different. Because Mr. Ty, our football te teacher in um, at school, he used to be a semi-pro player. I think for Altrincham or something, or one of them teams. And like he, he he got as well structured in our passing and all that, and that was good. It's good if you're playing it, but watching it, no, not so good. Yeah. Not so good. Well, it's it's like you know if you want to draw a parallel with boxing, it's like you know that fighter is terribly effective but just doesn't entertain. You think, okay, well, I can sort of admire and respect it, but I can't love it. I can't really. <laughs> you know, I don't really just. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to watch it. There are yeah. some fighters like that. It's just boring. But effective. Well, well oh, Chopper Jermaine Harris. Was, <laughs> yeah, Chopper Harris, man. Chelsea, yeah. 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 With the comb over, bro. Yeah, he was a bit of a nutter, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a few comb overs. Ralph Coates was the original comb over, bro. Ralph Coates. Good player, though. Yeah, I don't remember too much about him. Yeah, he used to play for Orange and Spurs. Okay. Why can't I remember him? I'm having a mental block then. Mm. <laughs> Anthony Macken, that's why I rate Man United's treble winning team over this Man City treble winning team. Man United won the treble with tough competition in the league and FA Cup with Arsenal. Yeah, man. Yeah, Fight, fan, Fight Fan TV Live, big up. It's a shout out to Beat to B and D Style. Yeah, man. Big up D Style. Big up Fight Fan. Yeah, it's too te it's too tactical, Diobinuli. Paul McGrath. You see, remember Paul, Paul McGrath? He was a drinker, wasn't he? That's the guy I was thinking of. It wasn't. I was. I said Ince, but actually, I meant Paul McGrath. You're right. And there were a few yeah. others. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he lived that hard life though, didn't he? he yeah. Played hard and <laughs> yeah, but it showed on his face, didn't it? <laughs> he looked like he had a hard life. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Paul McGrath. You know. Yeah, good player. Though. He was good. Yeah, just never smiled much. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who was the, the, the who was the Dutch guy? Was he no, not Dutch? The, the Danish guy who played for Liverpool. Jan Molby. Yeah. I used to like it. I, he, his part, he was a great passer. He had a great shot, man. He was a good player. Yeah, and when he you had, 
He's, he, he had that Scouse accent. I was about to say that, yeah. Where's it come from, mate? <laughs> I mean, he came from like Copenhagen or somewhere. Yeah, yeah, he, had, he had the, the, the most Scouse accent ever. <laughs> wow. But but doesn't that doesn't that tell you something? I mean, all his, you know, at the time, most of the players were Liverpudlians. So he was completely surrounded by yeah, the Liverpool yeah. accent and he picked it up. That sort of illustrates the point, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like um, who is something like Ronnie Wheeler? That's he was it. a dirty fucker, bro. Yeah, Sammy Ronnie Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah, Sammy Lee. Normal, no, nah, normal white side was United. He was United. Yeah, white side United. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. Gary Bertles playing for Forest? Yeah, I remember Gary Bertles. Scored in a yeah. European. Well, if he came on in his first appearance for Forest and scored in a European, one of the European Cup matches. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Trevor Francis, 79, against Malmo, he, the diving header. That's when, right. When they won yeah. it. I think John Robinson won it for them the next year. Yeah. And yeah. Um, who was it scored? Is it Peter With scored for Villa when they won the European Cup? Oh, yeah, Peter With, you know. Yeah, 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 Peter With. Yeah, 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 yeah. These people are forgotten, but, they, 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 you know, they, they've achieved great things and people don't remember them enough. Yeah, well, their manager was a hard nut, isn't it? Ron Saunders, boy, Villa. Yeah. He was yeah. a proper hard nut. <laughs> he looked it, didn't he? He looked, yeah, he looked kind he of scary. Did. He, did. he did. He looked like, nah, don't, don't. Because like, he took off his shirt and he was just full of muscle. I said, flip it, no. <laughs> yeah. His whole face, he was just full of muscle, bro. Ron Saunders. <laughs> and he was about 50, wasn't he? But he was still, yeah. he still looked, looked like, like he could have a row. And then he had, nut, he had coffee as well. Yeah, yeah, proper hard nut. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You see the player. He, he ruled by. I don't know if he ruled by fears, but the, the players definitely like just pure respect for him. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I remember when Villa won the European Cup, they interviewed him on the coach, and they interviewed Ron Saunders, and he was like, "They said, oh, is this the greatest day of your life?'" And he went, "No, no, not at all." I said, "They said, what is?" He said, "Well, when my son was born." That, that, that sort of sums him up because he's like down to earth. It's like, yeah, okay, we won a good football match and we've got a European Cup bit of history, but let's get some perspective here. Wow. You, know, you don't really get that. It, well, I suppose you, you maybe you do. Maybe I'm, I probably don't know enough about the modern game to comment, but uh, you don't get that and then enough of that sort of spit and sawdust thing that I used to like about football. Okay, Dio Binui says, I think Ryan is trolling, pretending to be a substance abuser. That did run through my mind. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Interesting. Like, see, the, see, like the, the internet culture, the social media, they do stupid shit like that. You know, let me pretend I'm a drug addict to, 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 to show everyone that I'm an edgy teenager. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you where you're a boring piece of crap. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a drug taker. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it's a, lot, a lot of these girls who do the only fans thing they go on like they're some sex kittens you take them home like and say okay let's get that you know what I mean <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them they're not about their life I'm telling you I know they're not I'm telling you well that, that's that's because it, they, they're they mistaking the internet and social media for real life yeah. <laughs> some of them actually grow up thinking that, that this is real you know it's and only fans. I mean, look, I don't know much about it. Isn't it just like like amateur porn or pinups or whatever these kids are? I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Some of them are, I know have been boxing as well. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? There? <laughs> Misfits. Yeah, exactly. Where did you pick that? Nicole Class, and I ain't heard that name for a little. Oh, bit. Christ, that's going back. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Right. They're like, damn. Yeah, he used to play for Tottenham, isn't it? Nicole Classen. Wow. Man. Like the, the other month, man, I, I put um a game on on YouTube. It was Wolves against Tottenham. I think we beat them 7-0 or something like Ooh. that. And it was great. I was just because I was in the stand. I was just reliving all the goals. The other, <laughs> that, <I> remember that. <laughs> that was brilliant, man. Well, what yeah. era was that? What, what you? I mean, roughly, what time was that? Eighties, eighties, early eighties. I mean, like, um, yeah, early eighties. Because I, I remember when Wolves won. I think they won the League Cup the when Cup. Andy, Andy Gray. Andy Gray. Okay. okay. I think Andy Gray scored the winner. 
I can't remember who it was against. Wasn't Emily Hughes playing for him as well at the time? Yeah, you might. Yeah, you might well have done. You know, yeah, yeah. And that and was his he, last. He was a proper Liverpoolian, come from the youth system, and yeah, like we were saying, Emily. To he was captain, wasn't he? Played for England. That's right. Even the managers at Liverpool were all Liverpool born and bred. You know, Shankly, Paisley, uh, all yeah. the way up to the. Oh, I remember his name. Shankly Paisley, yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. You had Ron or Roy, what was his name? I can't remember the name. The one before Sunas, or was it just after Sunas? Yeah, man, uh, wow, I mean, great era, man. Yeah, great. it was. Yeah, it Good was. Moment. It was. It was. Good and and it weren't it weren't expensive either. That's my thing. That's because I can get into it. <laughs> never yeah, it wasn't expensive, man. You like, uh, yeah, like, like I said, you know, you, you pay, you get them dodgy pies. Yes. <laughs> Crap burgers. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but then after the match, you just go down to the Wimpy, wouldn't you? You know, yeah. Get yourself a nickel of glory or something. <laughs> and like, I, I maintain, man, like when they took um, when they, when they when they took it from an only standing to only seating. Yeah. Yeah. No, it killed it. It killed it. That was the uh, was it the uh, Bradford fire and the yeah the ice and and obviously the the, the uh, Hillsborough thing. Hillsborough, it, yeah, yeah. It all came on top of one another, really. When you think about it, it's I've, I, listen, I've I've got caught up in squashes, right? Mm. And, and it is scary. It is scary. The whole stand. Yeah. So it yeah. had to go. It had to go. But the, you you cannot beat standing up in the crowd. You cannot be beat standing in the crowd. When when I when when they introduced that all seater stadium thing, um, I I used to go to quite a few uh, non league matches, sort of because I'm from North London. I used yeah. to go to St Albans City quite a lot, um, and that, obviously that was all standing still. And the the, yeah. the, the the atmosphere. I mean, I remember, I remember being at a second round of an FA Cup when St Albans played Torquay and they got a one one draw. And that's one of the best atmospheres I've ever had. There's like four thousand people crammed onto this. These concrete terraces, fantastic! It was really a great memory. Um, but that was a non-league match, you know. That's what I'm saying, yeah. man. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need more of that. Kobe I think just, you said Kobe Kobe are in the quarters this year. Oh, so um, Anthony Mackin, appreciate the super chase and Spurs versus Coventry City FA Cup. Ah, oh, man. Uh, that 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 was gutted, man. I think um, they done us on the replay, didn't they? I think did Mabbitt score an own goal? I can't I can't remember. It was an old goal. I was gutted. I was totally see. I was a football fanatic. I was gutted when we lost, man, to Coventry. I was so sure we were going to win, man. That would have been our third win in that decade. They got us, man. They got us. They got us. Yeah, they got they lost one nil, didn't they, in the replay? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gutted. I was gutted, man. It, but, took me, yeah. it took me a long time to get over losses in football games in there. Is where I <laughs> it, really, yeah, it, took me a, it took me a long time. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was gutted when um, Ipswich beat Arsenal in 78 because I was only, what would I have been, about 10. And I was really oh, yeah. into football. And they had, Arsenal had three three FA Cup finals in a row. They lost to Ipswich. Brian Talbot. Brian, was it Brad? No. Did he do it? Was Brian it Talbot was was with Ipswich and then he joined Arsenal the following year. But when we beat oh yeah, we played for Arsenal. Yeah, who scored? Is it Eric Gate scored against? Who scored against? Okay. No, it was um, John. Was it John Walk? No, not John Walk. Right, uh, I can't remember. No, I, I don't remember know. losing. One. I, I was happy. Obviously, I was happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the third one was against West Ham when you know Trevor Brookings scored that header. The ball just hit his fucking head and pinged off. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Johnny said Hutchinson diving header. Free two. Yeah, at night it was free two. Yeah. Clive Allen, yeah. Yeah. Clive Allen yeah. scored how many goals for us that season, man? Flipping hell. Didn't he go to, he went to Arsenal first, didn't he? And before he'd even kicked the ball, he then went over to Spurs. Was that how it went? I yeah, yeah. He, he, I think he transferred to QPR, but he didn't even play a game. Or was it QPR? He came from QPR to Arsenal and then he didn't play a game and he went there. Yeah, he went to Tottenham, yeah. 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 
Yeah, it was a classic. Three two classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Anthony. It was classic. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Donny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Three two classic. And Ricardo Villa's goal. Amazing. In that three two final. No, that that's the city game. Like the commentary game was three two as well. Oh yeah, sorry. I, yeah, I'm, I'm getting across. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm with you. Well, they were both great games. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh, that listen, the the city game like flipping out. I remember Mackenzie scored that volley. What a volley, bro! Mm. Scored that volley against us, and like, I thought it was over. We rallied back, man. We rallied back. Yeah, it was a great, great final. And don't forget Villa, well, you, as if you would forget. In the first match, oh, really Villa was terrible. He got substituted. And in the second, in the replay, he scored that incredible goal. I mean, what a comeback. I, w I went crazy in the house, bro. I, was crazy. <laughs> I think my parents must have thought I was off my head. I was like crazy, bro. You know what I mean? That was a great yeah, moment. That was, that was a, that's, that's what you need. Those moments that stick with you like decades later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ricky Villa and Ozzy. Yeah, 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 yeah. They came over together, didn't they? Yeah. World Cup winners. 78. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think one of them were, was, I think Ozzy was in the squad. I'm not sure if Ricky was in the, the, the squad. He might have been. I thought he was a substitute, but I might be wrong. He, I'm, not, I'm not sure if he played. Play, was he a first? He probably played for Argentina. I'm not sure if he was a regular though. Yeah. Man. That was Man. that was so unusual to two foreigners coming over to Britain. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then and then that the you know the Falklands thing happened and they were like, oops, I think we better go back to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like um, I'm trying. Birmingham had an Argentinian. I can't remember his name though. Yeah, no, you can't remember that one. I don't remember that. Yeah, they they had one early eighties. I can't remember his name though. Mm. And like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that that just came became the thing. Foreign yeah. import that became the thing, man. You know, Klinsman. I always remember him as being sort of like the key to the door when he came over, and because he was successful. Um, a lot of other players thought, okay. Yeah, Klinsman was a bad man. Klinsman was a bad man, bro. I mean, you're a gun. <laughs> you're a good mm. Klinsman. But he did a lot of diving. The old flying, the old Stuka dive bomber thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to say this because I'm an Arsenal fan, but I don't care. Um, that diving, no, I ain't into that. I'm not into that. Oh, he used to dive like mad Klinsman, man. Yeah. Winning penalties. Yeah, he, he, he was King Diver. <laughs> King Diver. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had it down to an art form. I remember Brian Clough talking about him, and he, he was, as you can imagine, he was not complimentary <laughs> about his diving. Cloughy, bro. You know what I mean? My, my granddad used to love Brian Clough just because he was the way he was. He didn't know what was going to come out of his mouth next. No airs and graces with that man. No. no. It's a but, shame the way he went out, you know, with the drink and everything. Yeah, he was, a, he was a serious alcoholic, man. Yeah. He was a serious Turning up on, on interviews, pissed and... And then... Um, yeah, it was sad because... Um, I think it, it, it was it, he took Forrest into the into the what would it was it first division or was it first, first division? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and like you know he went out. It, it was a horrible exit for someone that prolific in, in management. Because they got they got um, relegated the year that his final year. Yeah, in his final year. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know when you when you think about it, I mean he Forrest remained the only team. That have won the European Cup more times than their own league title. They've won won it twice, and they've only ever won the league title once. And he also took Derby. I think it was Derby to the semi-finals of the European Cup. So won the league with Derby as well. Yeah, yeah. He was a great match. And his, and his um, number two was it Taylor? I can't remember his name. 
That's right, Peter Taylor, yeah. Peter Taylor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them two are formidable, were a formidable duo, bro. Yeah. They should have should have been England manager, Crofty. Yeah, but you know, if it was today, they'd get, I think he'd get the job. But back then, it was just too stuffy, wasn't it? It was just too formal to let Cluffy. Because Cluffy would expose them, in it? Like, <laughs> yeah. Cluffy would, would, you know, he'd just go out in the public and say, you see them in there, they all these shooting. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's what they do, you know what I mean? And, and they, they just weren't going to risk it. And everybody would be going, go on, Cluffy. And yeah, yeah, the only yeah, people who yeah, disagreed yeah. would be the ones that, that he was exposing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just weren't gonna, that that's why they went with Ron Greenwood. Yeah, like, they should have never did that. You know what I mean? Like he was a nice man, Ron Greenwood, but he should never have been England manager. No, he shouldn't have been. Yeah, and man. I mean, you know, he didn't do great at West Ham, did he? I mean, he did all right. He did reasonably well, but it wasn't like he, you'd yeah, he one of the standout managers. Yeah. In the first he should, certainly weren't one of the standout managers. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know how he got the gig. I don't know how he got the gig. Company man. Yeah, company man, company man. Safe pair of hands in terms of like um, PR. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, he wasn't going to say anything out of order. No. No. Anthony Macken at Beats. Do you remember the Brazilian who played for Newcastle in the 80s? Mer um, Is he oh, thinking of Aspria? No, no. Oh, no. I was late. I know, I know Aspria. Mir yeah. Mirandinia. No, 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 no. I don't remember that. No. I don't know. Yeah, mm. Danny, the first season Spurs were brilliant to watch with five up front. We used to play beautiful. I'm telling you, man. We used to play some great football, man. We used to play some great football. I know we weren't winning leagues or anything. Maybe we weren't, but it was great football. Like when we had players like Hazard, Hoddle, our dealers. Mm. We used to play like, our football, was, and um, you know, we had we had some, some hard nuts in, in the centre half, Graham Roberts and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great to watch Tottenham. I Great. mean, Gary Gary Mabbott was was quite tough, but uh, even even though he got his eyes smashed yeah. in by fashion, yeah, 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 yeah. But he wouldn't back out of a tackle, you know. No, 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 no. no. And fashion was a big dude, big powerful yeah. dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. What wasn't very talented, but his physical presence very well, talented. Him and um, Vinny Jones sort of summed up Wimbledon, didn't they? Because they're both big, tough geezers who, you know, they, they weren't going to back off. And we're, we're crazy gang, man. Someone mentioned them. Yeah, they they were just on another level, man. Yeah, it's on another level. Yeah, like you know, when they, when they beat Liverpool. In the cup final, they said um, that that they that, well, I don't know if it was the whole day. They were just shouting that that down the, the tunnel. You know what yeah, I mean, they, someone said that Liverpool were a bit taken back. You know what I mean, <laughs> 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 who were these lunatics? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> who was it scored the winner? Was it Laurie Sanchez? I think it was Laurie Sanchez. Yeah, I think it yeah. Did. yeah, yeah. I remember that game. God. Yeah. Because they just played route one, kick, chase, overpower yeah. you. And uh, what Watford used to play like that as well, That's Graham right. Taylor. Yeah, you know they did. Mean? Yeah, I've got, I got a friend. I used, I used to be in a band with a like, mate of mine was a big Watford fan. Goes all the time. And I went a few times. And it was always, you know, hit and hope. Like, get it up front as quickly as possible, away from our goal, as close to their goal as possible. Yeah. Route yeah. One. But a lot of them used to play like that in those days, didn't they? Yeah, to, like the pace was a little different. And like, you know I mean, okay, you don't want too many Wimbledons in, 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 in the league. Because yeah. like, you know, you're going away from any like technical, tactical football. You don't, you don't want that. But I used to like the pace, man. Like, you know, like you watch United like, and then have Kachelskis down the wing, you know, and Dwight York and <laughs> Cole. Yeah. Great goal scorers, Van Nisselrooy. Um, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good teams. Good football. And like, remember you bowed and he took the crossbar off for Leeds and uh, they don't <laughs> shoot, they don't shoot from, from long range no more. Yeah, yeah. All the teams that will not shoot from long, like Tottenham. I said, well, like, 
fucking hell, man. <laughs> I think some I think some teams try to play, you know, that style and, and it's it's like the equivalent of the football equivalent of hooking with a hooker. You know, <laughs> you know he shouldn't do that. You, you know, yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll yeah. sort of try and try and play all tippy tap fancy against the team when really they should be emphasizing their own strengths, which might be say something more physical or something more direct. You know, they've got it into their head that they've got to play that type of um, you know, Barcelona style football. I don't remember this Mirandina, but you, I think you're talking when Newcastle were in the second division for what you're saying. They used to show the games in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. See, because um, match of the day didn't show Division Two. Big the big match would show Division Two games. Okay, yeah. Oh, the big yeah. match with Brian Moore. Brian Moore, yeah, did show you know what I mean Division One and Two, but I think match of the day was. Um, did they show any division? They might have done. Mm. No, I think it was just just um, first division. I know. More recently, they've had their own like the the what what would be the old second division. What is what's it? League One now, whatever they call it, football league. Yeah, yeah. They've got their own show now, haven't they? Yeah, they've got their own show. Yeah. Communist headpieces, long range shots are frowned upon now because analytics will say it's low percentage opportunity to score. <laughs> Bloody hell. Can you imagine if you told Ronnie Radford that when he whacked that ball in for Hereford against <laughs> Newcastle for yeah, about 35 yeah. yards? Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. shoot, mate, because it might not go in. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Analytics. Yeah, it's going to end up being Haney versus Barbosa. Do you think there's a chance Ryan won't show, or do you think he's just <clears throat> flying around? Um. I think he won't show. Yeah, possible. Maybe, maybe. I mean, uh, the, what what the guy said earlier about it being a sort of trolling that that's a possibility as well. But I I think what I think he probably will show. He'll just get smashed up, and then it'll be rebuilding time. Meant from from his brain inwards, outwards, I should say, get himself mentally fit again. And then if he wants to carry on boxing, he will. But this is not going to end well against Haney. I think Haney. Trounces him. Yeah, well, you better get to work up Texas with Derek James, man. You better get to work. You know what I mean, because I, I, I don't think the zone are gonna have him messing around. If he, especially like you, you're, you're getting high and bragging about it, and then you underperform as well. If he performs, then they might look over some of the stupidness he's doing. Well, they must be talking to him about it, surely, behind the scenes. They must be saying, come on, you know, what are you doing? You know, you, yeah. you need to be focusing on this stuff. Derek James can't be happy with what he's seeing. You would have thought not. Unless thought it is a, but, a know, ruse to some kind of, you know, lull people yeah, into a sense of security. He's going to make Derek look bad, isn't he? Obviously. He's yeah, yeah. Derek... yeah. Well, Eddie Reynoso said no more. You know, out you go, you know. Well, he tried to go back to Reynoso and, and, and he shut the door on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it you know, it's like you, people have to mature at their own, their own rate. Sometimes you've got to let them crash and burn and then they'll, the penny will drop and they can start climbing. And he seems to be one of those kids. You know. Okay, they, they're launching off the Los Angeles press conference right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, Ryan? Ryan? What you Ryan and Evan, yeah, yeah. Really? I didn't realise that was on today. Yeah, so I might go tune into that actually. Okay. I'm, are you going to watch um, Eggington and, and Burrow tomorrow? Yeah, I am. I've got a, I'm going abroad on early hours of Saturday, so what I'll do is I'll watch the fight and then jump in a taxi. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably catch it. Um, it's a good fight. I mean, I know Eggington's the underdog, but. I got a feeling he can do it on points. You think so? I've watched that guy. It's pretty useful, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty I've, um, I know someone who knows Eggington quite well, and he says he's really looking determined. Okay. Um, so I'm uh, look. I could be completely wrong, of course. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Certainly wouldn't be the last. But I've got a feeling he he, may, he always makes a tough fight of it, Eggington. 
if if you want to beat him, you've got to really give it hundred percent, and you never know. It's, it's in Telford, so he's got home advantage. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Good fight, yeah. 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 That's super well tough. Like, uh, European title. Yeah, should be good. Should be good. And um, yeah. Peter Fury, he's um, got Matty Harris. Yeah, that's an interesting hookup, isn't it? I mean, I didn't see that one coming. Well, you know, like, uh, I think um, Matt, Matty will do well with Peter. I think, I think they're a good... Um, Combination the way he boxes, not he's no tight, exactly, but he, he's he's got that kind of like um that loose, long arm style that Fury, you know, yeah, with, with John. So I think it, we think it would be, you know, what I mean, be, be interesting, be interesting. I think he, I think it's a good matchup. He's still a young man, isn't he, Matty Harrison? About twenty four, is he? Twenty four, yeah. He lost last time out, obviously. Yeah. And he, he ran out of gas really badly. I mean, I don't know. He's got to get his head down. Yeah. they got to work on his stamina. Yeah, he was... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Stamina. Getting that hard sparring in. Yeah. Well, in the old days, it'd be it would be loaded. Right? Now it's probably all in the gym, but... You know. Well, you said that... Sparring, like doing 14 rounds worth of sparring and stuff, yeah. That's good. That's good. So he's working hard. One defeat doesn't mean anything. No, no, as long as he doesn't make it a habit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to learn. You, sometimes you learn the hard way. We'll see. Pete, Peter Fury won't be bothered by that defeat. He'll say, all right, you got beaten, so what? Let's move on. That's the right attitude. Jam down, he says, Beats, when and if you watch back the press conference that just took place, you'll see that this whole event is a street show. Barbosa, he went to the podium and said he's ready to step in. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. See, there, there's, there's a, a growing air that where, where of, um, he might not turn up. There's a lot of people who don't have confidence in Ryan. I, it's possible. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. I know. It's, he might play that card and say, look, I'm just not well enough. And he's been showing out. I mean, I know that you, you yourself and a few others have said this, but maybe he's trying to create that air of someone who shouldn't be fighting. And therefore, when he pulls out, people will say, OK, well, that's a good thing. They won't sort of cast aspersions on him. They'll say, well, obviously, the kid's not well. So, yeah, he shouldn't be fighting. We'll give you a pass on that one. What happened to just training hard and say, yeah, I'm coming to win? What happened to that? <laughs> <laughs> soft center isn't it I mean, you know that it, again it, it, he's hit the, the, his platform is social media you know it's like you were saying about these only fans models or porn stars wherever the hell they are you know they, they mistake it for the real world and i think ryan mistakes it for he he, he sort of doesn't equate he, he can't separate the the fantasy yeah. from the reality yeah. of being yeah. a boxer yeah he definitely can't. Definitely Peter can't. Fury should train him. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I, I, he would, uh, he would, that wouldn't last two minutes, would it? No. <laughs> it wouldn't last two minutes. Yeah, it'd be fascinating. Yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting, though. It'd be interesting yeah. to watch it. Because I, I remember when De La Hoya was looking for a trainer and he ended up with, with um, Mayweather Senior. But Teddy Atlas was being interviewed and he said, um, De La Hoya invited me to come out and meet him as a possible trainer and I said no no hang on a minute you come and see me you know I'm interviewing you you're not interviewing me <laughs> yeah 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 I imagine Peter Fury's cut from the same cloth his attitude is all right you want me to train you what are you going to do I like that I like that attitude yeah well you know like a lot of coaches they, they don't care how much the fighter is earning or how popular is that they're in charge yeah it's the way it should be yeah. they're in charge that's why sugar ray Leonard got rid of janks morton because janks was with him from when he was a kid and like Leonard was a big grown-up man and he was still talking to him like a kid and raised great rare to get rid of him yeah you know what I, mean? yeah. I suppose it's kind of difficult not to believe your own hype 
you've got everyone blowing smoke up your ass, you're going to inevitably inevitably believe some of it. Um, and then maybe even subconsciously you start, you know, treating people worse than you should be treating them. The people that have got your best interests at heart. Okay. Devin asked him, will he turn up and Ryan didn't answer in the presser? Mm -mm. Mm. Fon said, this is a good point. He said, Oscar is a bad influence on Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. It's yeah, a good point. It's a good point. Dio Binuli, Ryan is trolling. I can't believe someone could be that unprofessional. I think he's acting. I hope so. Brad Murray, he's tempted to put a thousand on Haney, even at the horrendous one to seven odds. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to no. be honest. I'll be amazed if Garcia beats Haney. Absolutely amazed. A thousand on Haney. How much would you get back? One to seven. I don't know. You, it's not one to seven. seven. Yeah. You'll get about a hundred and what for a grand? About what's yeah. that? I don't know. One hundred and thirty quid, something like that. Is that all? Yeah. One to one to seven. No, it's not. Really. Well, you put one pound, well, you put seven pound on to win one. So whatever that translates into a thousand pounds. But you're putting seven quid on to win one. You're gambling seven quid to win one pound. That's kind of ridiculous. All right. No offense to the guy who put a grand on. I didn't mean to be rude, but that's not something I would do for that way. Yeah, not me. That don't look like the most scientific bet. <laughs> by any beads. Anthony says Garcia has got off the rails. He looks a mess in the presser. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. Um, where is he? I have to watch that. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Yeah. He's just um. Just, just a representative of this generation. That's all he is. You know? Yeah. And and and, and, and it, it's no surprise. It's a kid like Ryan who helps draw big pay per view numbers. It's not yeah. like some kid who takes it really serious. You know what I mean, it's Ryan. That's crazy. Yeah. And someone like Tank who won't give you the fights that you want. They draw the pay-per-view numbers. That's the problem with American boxing. That's the big problem right there. Yeah. And they don't, uh, they've got no one to sort of tell them a few home truths because they're cash cows and no one wants to upset them. Yeah, of course not. Like, you see, Oscar De La Hoya looks petrified of Ryan. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They let him get away, he gets away with it, like, I don't know. They should have just. I don't know, man. Oscar was a strange one because he was, he he had a slight sort of deaverish quality, but he could actually fight, and there was a bit of metal to him, even though he had his personal issues. He, he was one of those guys that seemed to be okay in the ring. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But whereas with Ryan, I think the difference is when Ryan gets in the ring, it's not like it's his his haven. Uh, when the game gets tough, I expect to see him quit again, like he did against Tang. Maybe Golden I mean, Boy gave him too much chances. Maybe they just cut their losses with him. You know what I mean, and they should. They should. But some park. of those like, top rank would have probably signed him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. top rank would have probably signed him if not. I can't imagine um, Bob Aaron putting up with him for very long. He puts I mean, up if he's Tyson 92. Fury. Say again, sorry. He puts up with Tyson Fury. That's true, yeah. No, Tyson well, Fury's yeah, Tyson a bit a lot more. Yeah, Tyson's accomplished a lot more, though. Yeah. 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 But so, when you're 92, you're not going to you're not going to up with any nonsense, are you, from someone who's 70 years younger? You know? Depends how much money they're making. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It's that bottom line, yeah. man. 
that's true. Case case of PBC will put up with it. Yeah. Barry PBC a mess. Barry, what's my opinion on Andy Cruz? I genuinely think he's the most beautiful boxer I've ever seen. Wow. Um, he's technically very good, isn't he? He is very good. Very good fighter. I was watching him the other the other day on on the match from card. And yeah, he's highly skilled, man. Highly skilled. Highly skilled. But they're fast tracking him, so hopefully he gets like a big fight and you get to see what he can do. Well, he's only had three fights, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, fast tracking, why not? Mm. Ryan turned up on a white horse, they're saying. <laughs> Why is Ryan wearing a lady's pantsuit in the presser? He wasn't dressed as Lady Godiva, was he? Fucking okay, no, a white horse. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange kid. <laughs> With his throne and everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, I can see him there. Uh, put that blood down, Ryan. Like flipping Oscar looking like I don't, I don't know what Oscar looks like in that white suit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> He's just an eccentric man, Oscar. Yeah. 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 He looks a bit more sober around today. Playing with his phone. Look, he just twiddling, twiddling his fingers on that phone. Put the bloody phone down. <laughs> Put it in your pocket, man. Gosh almighty. That's another sign of generational differences. <laughs> you know, someone of that age is always going to have their phone on them. I, 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 listen, I use the phone for functions outside of calls and texting. Yeah, I do. But not for long periods. Yeah. Not for long periods. You never see me just twiddling like, oh, some, no, no, no. Well, you've got to make sure the phone don't control you. You've got to stay in control of the phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah Some people yeah. ain't got that down yet. Yeah. Like people walking on the street, like, can't even see where they're going. Yeah. And they're just roasting the phone. You're thinking, uh, you're walking right in front of me. Like, look, look where you're going. Exactly. Yeah. Nutters. Absolute nut jobs. <laughs> look where you're going. crazy they, they, they've got to have a you know they've got to have a computer in their pocket basically nowadays i can't yeah. leave the house unless i've got a, a you know science fiction technology in my pocket and then you try and make a call and the reception's crap <laughs> yeah craziness man case is asking beats do you think oscar being a functional cokehead and alcoholic rubbed off on ran Maybe Ryan thinks he can do what Oscar did, but we didn't know about his habits until he retired. Mm. Yeah, that, that's the thing, man. Like, um, a lot of sportsmen, we don't find out about a lot of their habits until they retire or unless they get caught. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. R R Ryan, he can't multitask. <laughs> he, he, like, he, he, he can't multitask the drugs and performance in the ring. He can't do that. Yeah, yeah, Oscar's not the greatest role model for it. Definitely not. Ryan seems like one of these, you know, ADHD kids, or someone who's who's got some sort of behavioural issue, you know, like, that could be diagnosed. You know what I mean? Oscar, without the coke, has no charisma whatsoever. He did not sell the fight. <laughs> without the coke, oh dear. Oscar was high on the Ariel Helawani show. I tell you where he was high on that Triller broadcast. I yeah. can't remember if he was on there. He was out there, bro. <laughs> Drunk as well as high. <laughs> everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord knows what he was taking that day. He was high, boy. Even Eddie Hearn was saying, wasn't he? Did you see that? He was, yeah, yeah. he was off his tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. 
crazy. Vaughn said Triller is terrible. Is it still going? That's a good question. I don't think so. I haven't heard from it. Case K said Oscar was clean cut, good guy. That's what they sold him as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. They did. They did. They did. And he, he, didn't really, really, he didn't really blow the image. Uh, I don't remember why he was fighting, but you know, after he put the gloves down, that's when it went haywire. Mm. But then even Sugar Ray Leonard said he take he took coke, didn't he, for a while? Of, like you know, a lot of the boxes from the old school, yeah, they they indulged a lot of them, a lot of them. You know what I mean? A lot of them indulged. Stress-filled job, in it? So a lot, like, oh, a lot of cope, cope with drugs. Is how they mean. Unfortunately. Yeah. All right, man. I better check out now. But uh, it's been a pleasure. All right, Joe. Thanks very much for having me on. Have a good holiday, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Yeah, cool. Oscar looks like a crazy person these days. He just looks. Case said he was drunk and high on Triller and they were going to let him fight against Vitor Belfort. And that was going to be a wreck. <laughs> yeah. Oscar looked battered. <laughs> he looked at tough up, baby. <laughs> a lot of them old fighters think, yeah, I can still do that jump. Yeah, a lot of you can't. I tell you, a lot of you can't. You're just regular citizens now. You know what I mean? Regular citizens. Here's what it is. All right, people. I think we're going to hold time time on this one. Anthony Mackin says the entertainment value is way down there. What are we talking about? Boxing? Oh, still still on the football. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Not impressive. Brent, he said, Ryan is on the lags. Yeah, the, the only fans... It depends if you're going to date a girl in OnlyFans. It depends who's in control. Now, if you're infatuated with her, she's going to get over on you financially and mentally. But if she respects you and she's chasing you more, then you can, you know, what I mean, assert control. But uh, uh, dating an OnlyFans model. It's just something that, like, it, it would be Ryan. It would be Ryan to date an OnlyFans girl. <laughs> just bring pure aggro to your environment. That's all that's, that, that, that's designed to do. What else can she do? Barry Murray. Imagine Kelly selling up there off his block. <laughs> Oh dear. Casey okay, so says beats. Oscar is losing his mind. I had to unfollow him off IG. He does strange stuff. <laughs> oh man. Once said Hollyfield looked like Joe Budden when he fought Vitor. Oh man. <laughs> he got the brakes beat. <laughs> You're ready to go broke up, bro. <laughs> Sit your old ass down. <laughs> the real deal. The real deal. Cool. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what the messed up thing was? He still looked like 
physically like he could do something. You know what I mean? He still looked like the real deal a bit, but I was cracking up. I was laughing because there you are, former double undisputed champion at Cruiser and Heavy. Hall of Famer, but then again, he blew a lot of his money. I was like, but I was thinking, yeah, you know what I mean? You, you went out there and got your ass whooped. Like, you know, no one forced you to go out there, except, except his bank balance may have forced him out there. But Man. Money, isn't it? It's money. It's money. He, he, he wasted so much money in some of his ventures. So I can't really say. I can't really say. Me, myself, if I was him with that career I had, I would hope I wouldn't have to go back in there. In my 50s. I mean, how old is he? he went in there. It's not a young kid. Okay. Bruce said he's not sure Ram will be there on April the 20th looking at that press conference. So yeah, I'm going to go check it out. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, got, got to be pushing 60. Guzzy, he said it was that mansion he built from the ground up. Reminds me of Amir Khan's wedding hall. We're talking about Holyfield. He just spent his money crazy, man. Like, um, I think he, um, somebody who handles his finances was at his house and he said, he was, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of putting an extension in the house here and this, that, and that, and blah, blah. And the guy looked at him and said, why? Why? And he couldn't really give an answer. He couldn't really give an answer. <laughs> yeah, how he feels older than Mike. Wow. The real deal, you know. It's crazy. Our people are going to do this. Probably tomorrow evening. For Eggington and, and Matt Harris, probably catch you guys back then. Peace.